Yo, so I wasn't actually going to talk in this video, but considering it's such an expensive shoe and it's a pretty big restoration, I figured I'd go ahead and talk. So I actually forgot to take a video of how it was before I washed them and give them a deep clean. So these are just the pictures of it though. And this is after that I washed them and gave them the deep clean. I mean, it came back a little bit back to life, but I mean, it's not going to fix the creases. It's not going to fix the paint. It's not going to fix the hole. <laughs> I actually got these from GOAT. I paid 160 plus shipping, so 172 and all for a pair of Shatter backboards. I mean, that's a steal. That's like retail when these came out, but I mean, look at the condition I got them in. I originally was going to restore them and keep them but I mean I have a pair already and they're pretty decent condition so I'm not gonna go ahead and keep these these are gonna be for sale but um it's definitely a good restoration project I love working on these on my free time this is gonna be the donor sole the donor sole is an Air Jordan 1 Flight 2 no Flight 1 I think this pair is from like 2017 or something like that um I use them in all my Air Jordan 1 restorations I actually lost my exacto knife and this is just a box cutter, but I mean, it got the job done, cuts the stitching. In some parts, it was easier than others just because it was already separated. I pulled the leather back and cut the stitching. In other parts, I actually had to go and cut the stitching from the outside. Same thing with the donor. And I didn't show how I ripped them off. I was going to do some editing, editing, ed, god damn it, editing magic. But, um, uh, yeah, I didn't record that. But uh, basically, I just put them in the oven. I preheated the oven. I left them in the oven for like maybe two or three minutes. And they ripped off. Obviously, you can't do that on every shoe. Any shoe that has a visible air bubble, I don't recommend it. Any shoe that has suede, I don't recommend it. This Air Jordan ones, they're usually fine with that. So right here, what I'm going to do is fixing the hole. And I took this uh, piece of reinforcement from the toe box of the donor. And I'm just going to be gluing it to the back patching it from the back and then from there once I stitch it then it'll be permanently permanently patched from the back not too hard of a fix now I'm just gonna clamp it down make sure it doesn't move from that that's one spot that I need it After I fix the patch and I'm just gonna be working on the donor soles and the upper now what I'm gonna do is just take out the old glue from the donors I mean from the uppers and the donor soles uh, you need to need to take off the glue if not then the old the new glue is gonna stick to the old glue and the old glue is not as new obviously but it's fragile so it's just gonna come off at time just take off the old glue you have to if not, you're not going to get many wears before it starts separating it again. You can also use the cotton ball and acetone. I didn't because of the patch on the other side. I didn't want the acetone eating away at the new glue that I put. So, plus, the drum moves faster anyways. I mean, I'm speeding up pretty fast here, but I mean, this took me a couple hours to do. Or maybe a little less, maybe like an hour or so, but still. The way I like to do my glue jobs, I start at the toe and work my way back. And I like to align it and then heat it up. Um, it's a little tedious doing it this way, but it's just, I, I like to get my alignment perfect. And I edited it here, but I heated it up and then I let it sit for a little bit to cool down. Then I clamped it together, then I did the other side. The only bad thing about doing this method is the residual heat from the heat gun, it's on low setting, the residual heat from the heat gun sometimes heats up the groove from like the midfoot or the heel, so sometimes you'll get those to stick. Um, I mean, it's, it's something I'm willing to, to do just because I want my alignment to be right, so I do a section by section, usually left right of the toe box, and then left right of the heel, and then left right of the midfoot. That's just how I like to do it, and then after all said and done, I heat up the, the, you know, 
the soul, the rest of the soul from the inside. So I'm here, I'm just working on this back session. It gave me a little bit of trouble because of the residual heat from the heat gun earlier. It stuck some of the the middle of the shoe, it stuck it together. Same thing here, you see me ripping it off with some pliers just to align it properly. But you'll see right here, look, my glue job came out real nice. That one little piece that I'm gonna fix, but everything else came out real good. Aligned perfectly, no separations. Everyone has their different methods, but this is what I, it's always worked for me. All right, so this is after I fixed that uh, that separation in the heel. I was almost able to do it in one shot, but I mean, I'm not perfect, so it came out pretty good, pretty good. No separations, no glue stains. I usually go around at the end and making sure there's none anyways, but there really wasn't much. It came out pretty good this time around. Stress test, this is after like a day or two if it's been sitting. I don't recommend doing a stress test shortly after gluing. What I'm going to do now is remove the creases. Uh, I used to remove the creases with an iron and a towel, but uh, I saw this man on YouTube. He uses professional shoe stretch from Angelus, um, Vitch's Kick Gallery. And the first time I used this, I actually used it on the left shoe and it got the creases out, but I used too much heat. On the right shoe, the one you're seeing me do here, I did it just right. It got all the creases out, the texture is still there, everything looks perfect. So if you're gonna use this, make sure you soak it, wait, heat it up, soak it again, wait, heat it up. You, know, you need a lot of heat, but don't overdo it. This is probably the most annoying part of the whole shoe is this stitching of the midsole. It takes, I don't know how long it takes other people, but it takes me a good hour, maybe hour and a half to do one shoe and it would go faster if it wasn't for the toe box the toe box is like at least 30 minutes and everything else takes another 30 30 40 minutes so this is just a close-up in case everyone wants to learn so you see the string that's coming out of the shoe so you go ahead and with the sewing all that string that's coming out of the shoe and the string that's going into the sewing all you want it on the right side or if you're working on the left side of the shoe then you're going to want it on the left side but you're going to want to pull that side of the string if you pull the left side of the string instead of the right side of the string then it's going to create like a knot and it won't be stitched properly so you have here just pull it over and then I tie a little knot while I go in and out with the first string that I put. It's a little confusing. Uh, I mean, you guys are welcome to message me. I'll try to explain a little bit further, but I mean, it took me a while to learn and it is confusing to do. And if you do it wrong, then it's, it comes out a little funky. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the upper. I was using the Shatter Backboard Collector Edition from Angelus and I was going to start painting right away and then I realized I should probably I should probably put some white paint so I went ahead and put some white paint just to cover up some dark spots and actually I didn't even film this but the white paint that I'm using is the same white paint that I used in the, in the mud foot because um, that was too dark so what I did there is I just used white and I put like a drop of two of cream to give it that sail color so it's not a true white. Another thing, don't paint the stitching. I mean, if you're gonna be doing a restoration, don't paint the stitching. It just doesn't look correct if you paint the stitching. Um, and if you put too much paint, then, then it doesn't even look like there's any stitching there. So yeah, my recommendation if you're doing a restoration, don't paint the stitching. What I do is I paint around it and then I go in with a detail brush and wherever it's double stitched, I would paint the uh, the leather between the stitching. It's just, it's very tedious, but I mean, it makes the, the restoration project come out 10 times better. It looks more factory like that too.
since I put the white coat, I mean, I only really need maybe two, three coats of the orange before it's completely covered. And I forgot to film this, but I, um, the scuffs on the shoe, especially on the, on the inner side of this shoe, I just used sandpaper to sand it down. I used uh, 400 grit, 600 grit, and then 800 grit. And then I used 1200 grit as well, but that's really just to make it as smooth as possible. And use the black. Then once I did all the paint job, I just did a semi gloss finish. And then that's it. That's all I really did. And this is just going to show you a before and after. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if, uh, if I should continue doing these voiceovers. I figured this is such an expensive shoe and it's a pretty big project. So I went ahead and did a voiceover. But I could definitely do it. I have more restorations that I, uh, I'm going to be doing. I don't know if I'm going to end up filming it. But I mean, if I get some good feedback, I'll definitely film it. I have a pair of uh, Royal Ones in the works. Fire Red 3s that I'm going to put some Nike tabs on. gonna show you the other shoe hope you guys enjoyed let me know what you think about the video how the restoration came out and yeah any feedback let me know love to hear it thanks for watching